हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ कैम रूपनवा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी न्यू मेथड्स फॉर डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ अमाउंट ऑफ नाइट्रोजन फ्रॉम फर्टिलाइजर्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टार्टेड फर्टिलाइजर्स और द एनालिसिस ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर चैप्टर व्हिच इज इन अवर सिलेबस एंड द पेपर हेडिंग इज सी एच ए so see this is our section analysis of fertilizers soap and detergents and waste water treatment so first chapter is analysis of fertilizers and we have seen fertilizers types of fertilizers their uh, distribution according to npk ratio and the one method for the determination of nitrogen gelder method so our next two methods we will see in today's lecture so see today we are going to see these two methods total nitrogen determination by using following methods first one is urea nitrogen method and second one is <coughs> ammonia nitrogen method so initially again i am giving a definition of a fertilizer fertilizer is a substance which supply to the soil the constituents which are required for healthy growth of the plants the fertilizers provides the micronutrients which are essential to the plant for their growth there are around 16 micronutrients and in that three are npk these are very essential to the plant for their growth so fertilizers are broadly classified as natural artificial and the mixed fertilizers the natural fertilizers contain animal excreta that is a compost then sludge and cow dung then artificial fertilizers are urea nitrogen phosphate and the fertilizers we, which we will buy from the market for the plant growth and the mixed fertilizers are npk various preparations or the various proportions of the npks are there in market this mix fertilizers are also available example is this samrat then nitrogen in fertilizer present in different forms such as organic and inorganic form so specific form of nitrogen is required so determine only when specific form of purpose is there then and then only plant can absorb this nitrogen the most method for determination of nitrogen is liberation of ammonia with an alkali and absorption of ammonia in the standard acid nitrogen originally present in other form as a nitrate that means no3 minus nitrites no2 minus which are reduced to ammonia by nascent hydrogen in acidic or alkaline medium means no3 minus and no2 minus are the forms which are available and these are reduced to ammonia by nascent hydrogen in the acidic or in the basic media and the nitrogen which are raises to reduction are generally converted to ammonical form by gelders method means generally the nitrogen is converted into the ammonical form or no3 minus and no2 minus are converted into ammonical form then our second method is urea nitrogen method because we have already seen one method for estimation of nitrogen or determination of nitrogen which is a gelders method now urea nitrogen method is that so see nh2 c double bond o nh2 and there is a enzyme hydrolysis it gives twice nh3 which is ammonia is liberated plus co2 so see here are the steps for this method first step is an enzyme hydrolysis of urea to ammonia and co2 forms a basis for this titrimetric method for determination of urea in a mixed fertilizer containing phosphate so see this one is urea nh2 c double bond o nh2 and enzyme hydrolysis of urea it's done into the 
ammonia and the CO2. So this is the basis for the titrimetric method for determination of urea in a mixed fertilizer which contains phosphates. So second step is phosphate and calcium first removed by treatment with barium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. So see we have to remove the phosphate and the calcium from the fertilizer by the treatment with barium hydroxide and the sodium carbonate. Then solution is then acidified and titrated with nitrogen to remove CO2. So see what are the steps initially you have to take urea then do enzyme hydrolysis so due to enzyme hydrolysis there is a formation of ammonia and the CO2. So ammonia is liberated now then we have to remove the phosphate and the calcium from the fertilizer. So to remove phosphate and the calcium we have to add barium hydroxide and the sodium carbonate. Then solution is acidified and titrated with the nitrogen to remove CO2. Then fourth step is resultant solution is then neutralized by NOH then enzyme EDH is added to hydrolyze the urea and excess of standard acid is added and evolves CO2. Then resultant solution is titrated against an AOH. So this five steps are given here initially take urea then under enzyme hydrolysis is performed then ammonia is liberated and CO2 is there. So this procedure is useful for the urea which is present in the mixed fertilizer and mixed fertilizer contains phosphates, calcium and so on. So we have to remove phosphate and the calcium so that add barium hydroxide and the sodium carbonate. Then there is a precipitation. Then solution is acidified and then titrated with the nitrogen. So CO2 get removed. Then the remaining solution or the resulting solution is neutralized by using NMH. Then add enzyme irrigates into the hydrolyzed area. And excess of standard acid is added and the CO2 is completely removed. Then resultant solution is titrated against the sodium hydroxide. So see the reagent required for this procedure are irrigates powder, then neutral area solution, SCL2 normal, NOH 0.1 normal, then SCL 0.1 normal, barium hydroxide which is a saturated solution, then sodium carbonate, nitrogen and methyl red or methyl blue indicator. So these are the reagents which are useful for the distribution of nitrogen from area. Then see here is the detailed procedure. So initially we have to take 1 gram of area on 16 centimeter Wattman filter paper and paper number is given 12 in a funnel. So see take a funnel keep Wattman filter paper inside the funnel and then add 1 gram of area on it. Then wash the sample 20 times means just do washing to the area with increase in volume of a water around 15 ml and collect all the washing in a 500 ml volumetric flask. Add 75 to 100 ml barium hydroxide solution to precipitate phosphate. If required add excess drops of barium hydroxide and supernatant liquid is there. So precipitate and the liquid solution is there or the filtrate is there. Then Add around 20 ml of sodium carbonate solution to precipitate excess barium and soluble calcium salt. So required excess amount of the acid. Then dilute this solution to a volume and filter through the Wattman filter paper number 12. And size of the mesh size of the filter paper is around 15 cm. Then transfer the 50 ml filter to 250 ml. 200 ml earlier mirror flask and add two drops of methyl red or methylene blue indicator. Then acidify this solution with two normal SCL to purple color and add three drops of 
the solution in excess. Then bubble the nitrogen through the solution for 5 to 10 minutes so that carbon dioxide will be removed. Then add 20 ml of neutral urea solution. Stop at the flask and stand it for 40 degree Celsius for 20 minutes. Then cool the flask in ice bath and titrate immediately against 0.1 normal hydrochloride solution and the end point of the titration is purple. Then add the foaming agent like octant to prevent frothing and again bubble the nitrogen into the solution. Then carry out back titration with 0.1 normal NOH by using a formula percentage of area is equal to ml of 0.1 normal SCL minus ml of 0.1 normal NOH into 0.303 divided by weight of sample in gram. So by using this method we will find out the percentage of area. Then see here is the flow sheet of this diagram. From flow sheet we will easily summarize the procedure. So see initially we are going to take a sample solution or the fertilizer which is around 1 to 2 gram on a vacuum filter paper. Then this vacuum filter paper is kept on the funnel. Do washing to this area for around 20 times each time take around 15 ml water and collect the filtrate or the washing in a 500 ml earlier flask then in this filtrate add around the 20 ml solution of barium hydroxide until precipitate of the phosphate will form so that we will remove the phosphate from the filtrate and add around 20 ml sodium carbonate into this solution of the barium hydroxide so that the PPT of the phosphate and the carbonate will be formed and we can easily remove the calcium and the phosphate. Then again filter the solution and after that collect the filtrate and dilute this filtered solution up to the level 500 ml in the volumetric flask. Then take 50 ml of the aliquot solution, acidify this solution with 2 normal SCL, then add 2 to 3 drops of the methyl red indicator and the purple color is observed. Then pass the nitrogen gas to remove CO2 and 20 ml neutral urea solution is added into it and heat the solution up to 40 degree Celsius. Then cool the solution in an ice bath. Then add 0.1 normal SCL. Purple color is intense and add the NOH from the B rate. The purple color of the solution will disappear. This is our end point. From B rate volume calculate the percentage nitrogen and the percentage nitrogen is calculated by using this formula. So percentage of nitrogen in area so correct this percentage of area in instead of this you can note on percentage percentage of nitrogen in area it's equal to ml of point of normal scl minus ml of point of normal noh into point not point three not not three divided by weight of sample in gram so this is our first procedure and our next procedure is Instead of urea nitrogen, here is the ammonia nitrogen method. This method is useful for the analysis of ammonia in the nitrate form and they are reduced in alkaline medium. Ammonia is liberated out which is 
absorbed by a standard acid reagent. For this, we have the reagents. They were the alloy, NMH 42%, weight by volume. Then methyl red or methylene blue indicator. H2SO4 solution 0.5 normal, sodium hydroxide 0.5 normal. So, this method is called as a Devarda method because Devarda alloy is used. And advantage of this method is it requires less time than the Gildar method. Then this is the procedure. Initially, we have to take 2 gram of the sample which contains around 200 to 600 milligram of nitrogen and take this sample in you know, 800 ml of the Gildar flask. Add around 50 ml of water to dissolve the soluble salt. Then add 3 gram divided alloy into the Gildar flask. Then add gently 5 ml of the 42% NOH solution from the side of the flask. Then immediately connect this flask to the dissolution assembly in a such a way that the tip of the condenser just dips into the 50 ml 0.5 normal H2SO4 solution which is taken in the alumeer flask. Then shake the flask to mix the content. This flask is the Gildar flask, not the alumeer flask. So each and everything we have taken in the Gildar flask. 2 gram sample, 50 ml water, then 3 gram of Devarda alloy and the 5 ml of the 42% NOH. Just shake the flask and attach this flask to the distillation assembly and in the conical flask or in the Erlen Meyer flask which is connected to the condenser of the distillation assembly. This Erlen Meyer flask contains 0.5 normal H2S4. Just imagine the diagram of the Gildal flask which we have seen in the first lecture. Initially there is a burner. On the burner the Gildal flask is kept tilted way and in this Gildal flask all the material which is taken 2 gram sample, 50 ml water, 3 gram dehydrated alloy, 42% NOH which is taken 5 ml. Then this is attached to the distillation assembly and at the right side there is the flask which initially contains 50 ml of the 0.5 normal H2SO4. Then we have to heat the system or the gel flask so that we will collect the distillation which is greater than 250 ml and the time required for collection of this distillate around 250 ml is the 1 hour and then in the distillate we have to add methyl red indicator and titrate this distillate against 0.5 normal of sodium hydroxide. Carry out back and blunt titration and calculate the amount of nitrogen by using the formula. Percentage of nitrogen is equal to net ml of H2SO4 which is taken 50 ml into normality 0.5 into 1.4008 divided by weight of the sample which is 1 gram. Then this is the flow sheet. Take 2 gram of the sample in Gildar flask, add 50 ml of water for salt dissolution, then add 3 gram of Dewar's alloy, then add 5 ml of 42% NOH and attach this Gildar flask to the distillation assembly and add the aid that is a condenser tip. Insert this tip into the 50 ml 0.5 normal H2SO4 solution, shake the flask and collect the distillate above. 250 ml in 1 hour, then add methyl red in the distillate and titrate this distillate against the 0.5 normal alkali solution that is NOH, then carry out same titration for the water that means back titration and the blank titration is there and calculate the percentage of nitrogen by using the formula. Percentage nitrogen is equal to net ml of H2SO4 into normality into 1.4008 divided by weight of sample in a gram. So back titration and blank titration is important. One is carry out for sample and second one is carry out for water. So these are our two methods for determination of nitrogens. 
you can go through it and prepare your notes